I'm the Commissar, this is Forged Alliance Forever, let's go. Today we have 1v1 ladder action, up close and personal, one on one on the Forgotten Isles. We've seen this map a little while ago, but I don't see it that often to be honest. It has one snaky island like this and one interlocking snaky island like this, and then one island at the back for each player or team. Because I've seen this as 2v2 with players here, as well as 1v1. Speaking of teams, let's see who's playing. In the red corner, this is space, or as Tim Curry would say it, SPICE! Bonus points if you get that reference. You'll be showing your age, just like me. Anyway, space is 1648 rated and he is playing UEF and he started with two pgens before his mexes despite the fact he's got a hydro right here interesting choice let's see if his opponent has done the same his opponent in the blue corner he has done the same and this is Karateka who is 1487 rated and Cybron if you saw my recent community showing on the Forge Alliance Forever channel then you'll have seen Karateka before and he was doing some majestic Cybran Mazercom shenanigans charging around with a cloak let's see if he's going to do anything as memorable this game quick look at the map now Forgotten Isles it's got reclaim dotted everywhere but no real massive clusters the important things to note are these expansions and obviously symmetrically for space that the players can get to now this river here is fordable by both ACUs and hover or float units so we'll expect to see some people just walking out here and maybe transports out to drop some of these further expansions we have an air factory nearly complete for Karateka and he's got a transport queued up right away so it looks like he is planning to do just that space meanwhile he's only just started an air factory and we don't know what's queued up in it yet but there is a transport but it's only fourth in the queue so Karateka expanding more greedily there He was quicker to get an engineer to this expansion here, but Space had brought his com who built faster, and so although Karateka got here first, Space finished that a bit quicker, and Space has also got engineers out to these mixes around here much faster than Karateka has here. So if we look at that mix difference, it well, I was just speaking about the mix difference, but I reckon that Space just power stored quite hard meanwhile Karateka is already dropping here and here and then coming back so I reckon he'll come out and drop that as well but now we see the mass difference begin to take shape that's about four mixes difference there for space and it might pay off quite early and rather than go for the mix immediately, Karateka here is going for factories. He hasn't even queued up these mixes before. He's got three factories down. So definitely planning a wave of spam. His com, meanwhile, is just beginning to cross the water. Planning to come straight up to the front line here, while Space, on his side, is using the com for expansion. Now, Space is going straight into the water. He's queued up five naval yards that we can see there. And I don't think we have seen a single naval yard queued at all for Karateka. Uh, but he is dropping his island, and we can see on the minimap that so is Space. One of these NGs has been diverted to building Amex. Presumably more will be coming out soon. 
I'm guessing it was the NG that was in that queue, in fact. It, and, nope, he's going straight for the reclaim. I think that's a good choice. The reclaim will fuel it faster and will provide these factories the mass they need to churn out spam. And he can worry about actually picking up the mixes for long term income later. I'm a bit worried for Karateka's complete lack of navy, but it looks like he's being aggressive, because do you see what I see? I see a transport planning to land right here. Now, there are three engines for space here, but this factory isn't yet complete, and if Karateka drops, he could deny it. But what's he dropping with? Huh. It looks like the answer is one engineer, and therefore I am not 100% sure about the survival chances for this guy. Immediately, space reacts and sucks that engineer up and eats him for mass. Poor old engineer. Looks like we're going to have our first battle here. There are tanks lining up in the north for both players. Now, Karateka looks like he might be trickling in a bit there, but so he's pausing and repositioning. Good line from space so that he's engaging dribs and drabs as Karateka moves in. And that, I think, was a win for space. And then we've got more coming around here. So overall, space getting the better of that engagement by far. Meanwhile, though, Karateka has a sneaky little run-by while the com is over here building for space. Karateka is just walking in with a couple of tanks. And there's absolutely nothing to stop him eating up this little expansion at the top. And he'll need it, because look at that, space is still a 10 ahead in eco and 3k difference over the whole game when that's like... 25% of Karateka's eco. That's pretty huge. However, it looks like he's gonna happily claim these three mexes up at the top without any resistance and the com is falling back solely in person for space to defend them. Space, meanwhile, has finished Tech 2 land and he might need it because here is Karateka's com coming up here and heading for this area. There are point defences going up on both the flanks of this island here for space. And Karateka is naked, so the point defences may be a sufficient defence to hold back. But given that we just saw space finish T2, Karateka is really going to have to make this advantage of having the com pay before too many pillars start to trickle in. And Karateka isn't going for T2 land, as we can see from that notification down there. He's going for T2 air. So air versus land and navy is what we're going to see here. And good positioning from the com, just dealing with the spam and not losing any of his own spam while the com just tanks the T1 hits that he can easily take. Down here in the south, it is Space who is on the back foot, and Karateka has slightly more, so land advantage at both top and bottom seems like it might be going to Space, but look at this. Space has dropped on Karateka's island. He's putting up a radar, he's putting up factories. This could be pretty brutal. But he hasn't split these NGs, and that could be trouble when this bomber comes along and cleans them up. Boom, that drop is cancelled. He'll have to come back and kill the radar, but that should be nice and easy. And this trickle from space is really poor positioning. And look at it just being cleaned up by Karateka. Space being pushed back. Meanwhile, in the north, I think Karateka might have a critical mass there with his com. Because in he comes, he's now the one with a good angle, as this is all 
perpendicular to the main mass of Karateka's forces. And forward he charges. There's another wave coming in, but this will be dead by then, and so this will not be enough to clean the attack up. That said, Karateka does need to have his com on the front line in order to be fending this off. He's also bringing in air support, taking out this point defence with bombers from the air, which is nice. But we can't ignore this. That's a lot of subs swimming around in the central canal from space. And that could deny Karateka some movement when he really needs it. He's now got an NG here who's building a point defence which is some quite nice denial and rather than push into that full force here Karateka has gone round the top and there's nothing to stop all of these mixes dying. We do have pillars now out for space. There's a pillar driving towards the front line and they could make the difference if we don't see some tech here from Karateka soon because this is already a decent force of T1 and with pillars joining in the mix matters could get a bit worse. That point defence has gone up and Karateka carefully walling it in before he builds the mexes. Now we saw Karateka going for T2L earlier and look at that. Here he is with a horde of renegade gunships smacking aside that force that was messing up here and it's allowing his next wave of units to come in relatively unopposed while well, this force that we looked at earlier has just swept around here and look at this damage and that is 35 eco now 40 eco ahead for Karateka and this could be pretty brutal and he's not finished yet he's pushing in here the pillars will stop this T1 spam but will they stop it before he's taken out four more mexes is the question I think that would be a worthy sacrifice and here come the gunships into support. If they can take out the T2HQ that could be curtains for space. They're going for power which is nice, they're going for some production but they need to focus this HQ in my opinion. And indeed they do. You can see in the queue there that flak is being queued up, but it's not going to be coming out from that factory. Is there any anywhere else? Well, we're seeing gunships being shot down. 1,200 and 1,100. But the gunships are dead, and the HQ survives with 1,180 hit points. And there's still there's a flax now around the place, and there are four T2 support factories. So despite the damage to the HQ, the actual production capacity for space is undimmed. He has this huge bank of pillars here, which is easily crushing those mantis. I think that might have been a deciding moment in the game, but we can't speak too soon because look at the eco difference. The gunships have just come on to raid over here and are smacking up the eco and production here. They were also seeing that coming out here as well. And as a result, Karateka now has twice the eco, twice the eco of space. This is insane. How can space come back from a 2 to 1 eco deficiency? Well, he has an AT2 army, but is it going to get anywhere? I'm surprised that Karateka hasn't put gun upgrade on his comm yet to come and fight that, like gun stealth nano, and he, his comm plus the T1 spam would easily be enough to stop this. But, looks like we have an air raid being planned. Where's it going? And Karateka was just going straight for T3 land. He, T2 land HQ done, T3 land HQ immediately started. So, that's pretty nice. Over here, this is where the gunships are going. They're going to clear up Spaces Island as if he didn't already have enough eco troubles.
Sam goes to production and now there's no AA there. These two engineers might build a little bit, but enough to stop that many renegades? I doubt it. Up here though, the pillar force is massive. The pillar force is quite numerous and I don't know if Karateka has enough to stop it as it swarms forward towards Karateka's production. one hundred and twenty eight to fifty one that is an insane eco lead and where we did see space a little bit ahead in the early game now look at that that's a 10k total mass collected lead for Karateka however Karateka may have made a mistake he's falling back towards the water he does not know about this clutch of submarines and I think we'd better watch what's going on over here on the left we have the pillars advancing, on the right Karateka walks unsuspecting towards these subs and down here on the minimap in the south we can see the gunships are trying to clear up this attack force but they're actually being met with significant flak resistance. These pillars need to push and the gunships are attacking but Karateka is under fire from submarines. He is surprised there is a way out of the water here and he's trying to reach it but is he going to make it? The torpedoes descend upon him and he's immediately down into the, the yellow. Meanwhile, on the left, the pillars are pushing in and look at them carving through this force, but Karateka has to be the focus here as he goes down into the red. 2,000, 1,000. He's got a transport and he's trying to pick himself up, but a wave of shots hits 400... 400 hit points as Karateka's comm picks up flies away is he gonna make it down safely he is but wow that was a close run thing my dudes meanwhile Karateka has got his T3HQ up and producing loyalists but is it too little too late there's a loyalist here and that's been doing work there's a, lo there's a loyalist here and another one comes out but there's this flank of pillars coming round the other side and some of the loyalists are having to be called back. Now, I reckon space needs this HQ dead. Because that's a very forward HQ for Karateka and it's suddenly in the line of fire of an awful lot of pillars. The loyalist is carving through them, but if they just focus it down, I think they might get it. And that would be a huge investment that Karateka would have to regain. 3,000, 2,000, it's into the red. That HQ is shedding hit points. Nine, it's gonna die, isn't it? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, two, one, ninety. It's gonna make it. Ninety hit points out of 11,000. That's like. 0.8% less than one part in a hundred but it survives that is insane his commander down to 400 hit points his land HQ down to just 90 that's mad two lucky escapes for Karateka is he going to keep up the well the balls to the war lucky escape close shave play let's find out another swarm of pillars is coming in and the loyalists are now there to defend so there was an attempt to make gunship support that we saw but we can now see there's a decent amount of flak in there for space and I don't think that the gunships will get anything done but five loyalists might six loyalists and I'm sure as you can see there'll be more streaming in all the time pillars aren't bad I mean, they're no obsidians or ilshis, but they're not bad. And loyalists are among the weakest T3 units, but if they die, then they'll stun the enemy units around them, so it pays for them to get in close, and space has let them get in close. They're quite fast, and they're pulling back to um, regroup with this next wave, and I think all around that's some good play. But what is this? Well, we've had our eyes on the north. 
waves of spam have come running around the south. However, there's T3 units have been produced here as well. So we've got a support factory making loyalists. Most of this is T1 apart from the flak. And I don't think that space is going to get much base damage done here. This, however, might be another story. Because on this side, he's got pillars. And the loyalists will eventually deal with them. But they're going to take out a decent number of mexes, a decent amount of production. And of course, all this production has been wiped for Karateka. But because of the eco damage he inflicted earlier, Karateka is still 20 something eco ahead of space. He's left this one damage striker. Try picking away, and he just reclaimed it. Nice. And these guys have taken out three, four, five mixes before being cleared up. But now, Space has yet another thing to attack Karateka with, and Karateka has yet another thing to worry about. UEF missile cruisers. This governor is trying to finish the job that the pillar started and is targeting the land HQ. However, there's enough support that these engines are just repairing it faster than it's being killed and space will have to worry about firing tactical missiles at it because this is producing loyalists and as we know loyalists have tactical missile deflection however the cruiser is firing missiles far faster than loyalists are coming out and there are now two of them However, they aren't overcoming the assist, and it looks like they've been ordered to move on. So cheeky engineers up here from Karateka, but they're not building anything. I think they were just sent to get a bit of reclaim. Brief overview of the map. Ecos are beginning to come back in line with each other. Oh, but look at this. Do you remember when we saw those gunships clearing out this island for Karateka and space being thrown off it? Well, he's dropped it and he's just built on it. What well, the island that should be completely and unambiguously belonging to space is Karateka's. Nice play from Karateka. But he's losing T2 mechs that he thought were safe as these cruisers come sweeping by. How is he going to stop it? I see torpedo bombers being built in here. And he just got them on loop. But he's trickling them in one at a time. This is a mistake. You need five or six to take out a cruiser in one pass. And they're just going to die as they trickle in. So this is definitely a mistake. Karateka needs to mass them here before he sends them in against the cruisers. Another pillar push from space is blocked by a decent number of loyalists, but the cruisers continue to mass. Meanwhile, counter push round the south island from Karateka. That's a lot of loyalists. I don't think they're quite enough range to be able to hit these cruisers, and even if they were, the cruisers could just move back and keep on missiling, so Karateka is looking just to get damage done on the land where he can, while well, he has to take advantage. And I think that is the right play with these loyalists. And this combat is also going Karateka's way, but does he know about this flanking manoeuvre? Because he's just pushing forward with everything here. These loyalists are still screaming towards this front line, and these boys are just creeping around the back. Does he know that they're there? He doesn't, my dude, he doesn't know there's a huge army of pillars about to pop out and hit his HQ. And out they pop. Is this HQ going down? Meanwhile though, is that production for space going down on the southern island? That is a lot of loyalists, and some loyalists have indeed been called back. The HQ is again under fire. Will it be a repeat of last time, or will the HQ this time be destroyed by the pillars? Meanwhile, these loyalists are just running 
up north. I thought they'd stop and kill this production, but they're not. They're going straight in towards the Navy. 1500, 1400, we sort of get down to 90 hit points and survive last time, but this time it does not. And that is going to be a horrific blow for Karateka, because now he can't produce any more loyalists from those support factories, and he's going to have to rebuild his HQ. He's got engineers here, and he's reclaiming it, and that will be a good start, but, the, and he's fought off those pillars. But that's going to be a huge waste of both time and resource for Karateka, and it could cost him dearly. Meanwhile, on this side, he can range this factory, but he can't range the HQ, and that could be quite unfortunate for him if he can't stop cruisers and destroyers coming out. Now, my loyal viewers, we will soon be loyalist viewers when we go back and check on what they're doing. But first, we have to note this. There is T3 Air on the field for Karateka. He has a lot of torpedo bombers, which I think he's about to send in on these cruisers. And indeed, he is. That should be enough to clean them up. But he's now producing whalers. Meanwhile, I promised we'd look at the loyalists. And indeed, we shall. Here they are. There's T2 production here, but I don't think... Space actually has T3 yet, and this production is just production. It's not got any actual units out. These loyalists are going to massacre it. And this will be quite a big loss for Space. And there are more coming in, but I think that Karateka has made a mistake in not switching up to bricks. He needs bricks to come in and get their torpedo work going here. Because now here are these loyalists just standing around doing nothing. I mean, what are they, what are they going to achieve here? Nothing. And there is still this army again. Does Karateka know about it? He doesn't. He has no clue. His intel has not been that great this game. So he doesn't know that it entire T1 army just charging around here. Well, I mean, now he does if he's watching, but I think he's going to be more interested in these whalers that he's built trying to take out the cruisers. He's going to be microing this, and he's going to be microing it hard. Two cruisers dead, which is nice. He'll need to take this one and then the destroyer. But look, the Navy is just denying this entire area, and yet Karateka still has the eco lead. However, this whaler has just landed. The torps can't hit it, but they're certainly trying. Fun fact, he could have surfaced those subs and used them to shoot the whalers while they were landed. That would have been quite funny. I would have liked to have seen a sub killing a whaler with its deck gun. But, alas, it was not to be. Well, now he knows about these boys, but what's he going to do about it? He's got his land HQ up and in a safer position now, and he has got stealth and nano on his comm. But he might have to bring that comm out and stop just standing there, and it looks like indeed he does, yes, because this spam is otherwise going to cause him some problems. But, speaking of problems... Well, he's got a few units trickling in here, but there's more than enough to, to defend, including a destroyer from a space. So let's go back and see what's going on here. The Loyalists defending, but there's pillars in here as well, so a decent amount of firepower. And there's that cruiser missile fire still trickling in. But look at this arty. If this arty can take out... And the cruise missiles targeted. This could be brutal for Karateka. Boom! And this. There's this pigeon down. This pigeon damaged. The air HQ damaged. We could be about to see a huge turn up for the books. TMDs are going up as fast as possible. But boom! He loses the air HQ and his second pigeon. Is he power locked? No, but he hasn't got any energy storage and he's pretty close. 
breadline, my dudes. Breadline. So with this tactical missile bombardment, I think it will be stopped in the end by this, but look how much Karatek has lost. He's lost two of his pigeons, he's lost his air HQ, he hasn't got his T3 land HQ again, but he's still focusing on, well now he's focusing on engineers to rebuild as he has to. But what can he do? Well, he still has this island and this island. He actually has map control by an immense margin. He's just being penned in the base by this little horde of navy to which he has no answer. Things I might do in his position, though yes I know he's like twice my rating, but things I might do sitting here as an omniscient viewer watching what's going on. Rebo the air to T2, build a huge wave, maybe on this island, build a huge wave of torpedo bombers, send them out to hit the naval HQ, because now this island, which he's held uncontested for so long, despite it being in space's territory, he's now got a cruiser coming out to block that. And he has got tactical missile launchers going up here, but no tactical missile defence. And the tactical missiles fire. I'm quite glad I watched that now. Let's see where they're going to go. There's an air HQ they could take out. And they do. Okay, nice. Boom. Tactical missiles just take out that air HQ. But the land HQ, though it's still damaged from early, he hasn't actually repaired it. The land HQ is under a shield. And another volley of tactical missiles comes out. What are they doing? They are indeed going for the land HQ and... And they get it. Okay. There's no land HQ. There's no air HQ. So, we're, suddenly, we're back to Karateka having the tech advantage. This is amazing. He's got T3 land and... There's only T1 land and T1 air available for space. But, space has T2 navy. And these loyalists can't range it. These whalers can. All he needs to do is fly in and take out this naval yard with those whalers. And I think Karateka will be in an amazing position. But he has got to worry about his base being under attack. However, that's a lot of TMDs here. And they're shooting down most of what's coming in. These whales have just come over here. My dude, please kill the naval HQ. Build whatever you can and kill the naval HQ. Bricks will be amazing here. Just walk a few bricks in. Air snipe might also be possible with the space just standing there, especially if he gets some torp bombers out. But T2 land product, and he's got a brick. But T2 land production for space has retaken the North Island. He's at least cleared Karateka off this island mostly. And it is against space who has the eco lead. This has been a game of back and forth. And he's got a whaler trying to come in here and do the damage. But it's just dying to flak. And sure, he took out like, a cruiser. No, well, two cruisers. But the HQ is untouched and now he's lost all his air and he hasn't yet got the means to rebuild it. There's a bunch of Janus here that have been slaughtering this island and some of them have landed, that might be a mistake. In come the Inties from Karateka and some of them are caught on the ground but Janus are actually pretty good air-to-air. -air. Uh, they don't beat Inties mass for mass, but that's quite a lot of mass of Janus. And the Inties are going to lose this fight. <coughs> and the cruiser bombardment continues. Feels like a bit of a stalemate, but with these cruisers all around the place, they can just missile out anything that Karateka tries to set up on this island. And 
space could freely recolonize this. <coughs> Destroyer fire taking out the loyalists. So now the Janus just go to town on the loyalists, which aren't being microed. And this feels like a desperation play. Karateka has started a nuke silo. It's not going up very fast though, and he stops and reclaims it. What's his next plan? He hasn't yet rebuilt any air tech, as far as I can see. He might do so on this island. Ah, that's his plan. Now, we did see him go stealth cloak laser previously, and that was epic, and we loved it. But it's costing him power, and if any of the shots get through and hit this P-Gen, that could be very unfortunate for poor old Karateka. Is he going to be allowed to finish it? And I'm not watching elsewhere, because we can see on the minimap there's a couple of T1 raids pootling around. But, in comes a drop. Three transport loads of pillars come in, and they go straight in for the build power and the com. And GG, says Karateka, and he calls it. What a game, my dudes. Those close shaves. The HQ for space surviving with just a thousand hit points, Karateka's com with just 400, and then just 90 hit points on that T3 HQ for Karateka. But despite those two escapes when he could so easily have lost everything, Karateka was not able to hold out all the way to the end, and space finally wins. Oh, where do you think the turning point was? Because that point where Karateka had most of the map control two and a half times the eco of space space looked doomed but he was able to hold out he was able to get it back and navy won the day <sighs> tell me what you thought of that in the comments below while you're down there please don't forget to like subscribe and obey i'm the commissar and i will see you next time